Good afternoon, everybody. Today we'll be talking about the fundamentals of reinforcement feed. This is the first lecture in uh, uh, this course. In order to <coughs> understand conceptually why are we using concrete, concrete is used widely because it is cost saving on short term and long term, especially in countries with situations similar to Egypt. It is easy to cast in different shapes, it doesn't need highly skilled labors. Uh, most of the materials are locally available, especially in Egypt. However, uh, the disadvantages, the major disadvantages is that it is weak in tension and it needs steel reinforcement to carry this tension. Uh, the formwork requires long assembly time and it is sometimes expensive depending on the shape we are talking about and the load. The quality of the concrete could significantly vary. Uh, because of the workmanship and because of the variation in the raw materials and the suppliers that you are uh, getting your uh, materials from. And in some cases, if you are having a large size structure or long span bridges or high rise buildings, it's not necessarily suitable in such cases. Typically, the typical configuration we are talking about is that you have a slab and this slab is supported on a system of secondary beams that then support the B, uh, or transfer the load to main girders and the uh, uh, main girders support the load to uh, transfer the load into columns which actually then at the end of the day so transfer the load to the substructure or the foundations what we are dealing with in the first uh, part of this course is actually the superstructure uh, the, the foundations will be covered by uh, uh, another uh, senior professor. The general behavior of RC members is, as mentioned previously, that concrete is weak in tension and it is strong in compression. Therefore, from at the tension side, you will always find the bars in tension and the concrete being cracked. So the concrete will eventually crack from the tension side. Whether this tension side is uh, at the uh, lower part or the upper side, it depends on the shape of the bending moment for sure. So if you are having a the bending, if you are having a cantilever, the 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 tension will be up. If you are having a, a, a simply supported beam, the tension is down. If you are having a continuous beam in in at the mid spans, they will be uh, down. At, at the, above the supports, the tension side will be up. So this is something that will depend on the shape of the bending moon. The mechanical properties of concrete are mainly depending on its uh, characteristic compressive strength, which is measured at tested at the age of 28 days after uh, uh, testing uh, concrete cubes till failure. Uh, typically, this grade of concrete. Uh, we call it we call it actually the grade of concrete. It's uh, because it classifies the the, the 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 strength of this concrete. So it could range from 20 to 45 megapascals, and you could have more than that if you use admixtures for sure. But the common factor all over is that in general the size strength is negligible to the Compared to the compressive strength, the size strength is about maybe 5 to 10 percent of the compressive strength. So this is a, a stress strain diagram for different concretes with different uh, mixtures reaching different ultimate strengths. But at the end of the day, again, uh, they all have uh, the similar trend within the shape itself. And due to the uncertainties in the mixing process and the materials used. You always need to have a high factor of safety when it comes to the material factor of safety of the concrete itself, which is 1.5. So again, because you are talking about limit state design, limit state design uses the concept that there is one factor called the load factor, the load factor of safety. So that depends on the nature of the load. There is another factor called the material factor of safety. This material factor of safety it adjusts for the material properties. So now we will be lowering this uh, strength by factor 1.5. So if it is 45, you will divide it by 1.5, it will be actually 30. 
so on. However, for the load factors, we're dealing it with it at the end of this presentation. The modulus of elasticity is approximately 4400 times root Fc. When we move on to the steel, the steel ranges in size and it ranges in properties. In size, you could find up to 40 millimeter in diameter, okay, reduced in length of 12 meters. The grades of steel available to Egypt in Egypt, there are two main families. The first family is the mild steel, which is 240 megapascal and 280 megapascal in terms of the, uh, yield strength. While the 360 and 400 megapascal, they are considered as uh, height and size steel. The 240 and the 280, you will find them only at uh, very uh, thin uh, diameters, uh, 8 millimeters and less. However, the 360 and 400 megapascal are for the 10 millimeters and more. And this uh, grade is actually, as mentioned, is equal to the yield strength of the steel. And because the steel is manufactured in a factory, it is not manufactured on site. So it has much, much better quality control rules applied on it. So this is why the material factor of safety is 1.15, which is less than that of concrete because you, you don't have uh, the necessity of having a high material factor of safety. And the modus of resistivity of steel is approximately uh, 200 gigapascal for any type of steel. Moving on to the loads, the loads will vary depending on their type. Uh, the dead load is every load that is constant in magnitude and fixed in location. So uh, the own weight of maybe a wall or a slab or a beam, this is something considered as a dead load. The live load depends on the occupancy. So it depends on the usage, it depends on the accessibility. So if you're using something uh, as a regular room, it's uh, much, much less than if you're using it as a warehouse or as a um, uh, classroom or as a sport center or bookshelf area according to this table you could see down there lateral loads are another classification so actually the dead and the live loads this is what we are calling in Egypt the principal load cases the ones acting in the gravity direction however uh, uh, the lateral loads are principally uh, uh, wind or earthquake okay so these are mainly the main, main player in the lateral direction. So these two are classified as secondary load cases, the earthquake and So when combining things together, the basic or the principal load combination is combining the dead and the live. So if they are different in values, different in magnitudes, the one point, we use the 1.4 dead plus 1.6 live load combination. However, if they are near to each other, you use 1.5 dead plus life. If the dead load is actually a restoring force, so if it is a weight of a cantilever, for example, and you need the bending moment at the mid span, so now you will deal with it as a restoring force. So you will not factor it up as 1.4, you will factor it down, you get it as 0.9 in such case. So, Moving on, wind, earthquake, earth pressure, closed tanks, all of these are secondary load cases. So when combined to the principal load cases, you factor, you, you, you add them to the, to the equation, but you factor the whole thing down by 0 0.8 in such a case. Okay? And if it is a restoring force, if the dead load is opposite to the wind, that means that you will factor the dead load down further. It will be 0 0.9 dead, not 1.4 dead. Same thing for the earthquake, same thing for the earth pressure. Same thing for hydrostatic load, for example. So this is an example here of a structure. It has a uniform dead load of 15 kN per meter and a uniform live load of 30 kN per meter on, uh, in the gravity direction, vertical. However, you have a, a lateral load, reversible load of 95 kN, which is wind load. 
So if you look, if you draw the bending moment due to the bending moment and normal force due to the dead loads and live loads, you will find that they are very similar in shape but different in magnitude. Here we are not discussing how are, did you draw that stuff. How is, is a question of structure analysis and uh, you could get a lot of programs to do that for you. But we discuss, we are here we are discussing the concept itself. That they have the same maximums at the same location, whether positive or negative. However, the wind load will have a different location for the maximums, whether positive or negative. This is why when choosing the load combination that is most critical, you will find that the, the load combination that is most critical is not necessarily the same all over the different cases, all over the different sections that you are taking within the structure. So maybe at one location you have the maximum axial force and at another location you have the maximum bending moment. And at another location, you have the maximum positive bending moment. And these will be reflected by three different load cases here. So you could not actually guarantee, or actually three different load combinations. So what you need always to do is to examine all of the possible load combinations and take the most critical at each location that you are designing the... <coughs> Uh, 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 structure at.